Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Real Influencers Project. I'm your host, Craig Reynolds. And with me today is an artist, an illustrator, an entrepreneur, and a musician. My friend, Mr. Ronnie Zulu. Ronnie, how are you today? I'm doing very well. And you, Craig? I'm doing great, man. It's it's so good to see you and actually have a conversation with you. I think the last time you and I really saw each other was when we were working on the History Channel TV show, Ancient Ink, and I got mm-hmm. to meet you then. I think it was like 2008. It seemed like yesterday, but man, that was a that was a little, little bit of a, a, ago. It was quite some time ago, so it's yes. good to uh, cross paths again. Yes, I'm, I'm so, you know, this is the one thing that I like about social media, um, and there's a lot of things to dislike, but the, the one thing yeah. that I really like is that I get to keep up with the people that, that I want to keep up with. And I love to see your progress. You were, when we first met, you were in Los Angeles. And now yes. you are in Austin, Texas. Yes, for the big, last uh, seven years. Big change. Seven years, really? Yeah. Wow. So yeah. Doc, let, let's, let's jump all the way back to before those times. Where mm-hmm. did you grow up? I grew up as a small boy in Terre Haute, Indiana. Uh, and most people would never guess. Most people don't even know what Terre Haute is. Just a little small corn town. First job you get is the tasseling corn, classic Americana little place. Uh, And then the family moved to Florida, and uh, I uh, spent my uh, high school years there. And then uh, that's where I also went to art school. After art school is when I moved to California to Los Angeles. Nice. Was it, when you were in Terre Haute, was it all, was, was art an issue or an interest for you the whole time as well? Has that, was that always something that you were like, this is the path I'm going down? Yes. Even as a small child, I remember from the first time I could hold crayons, uh, I was drawing constantly. I, did, I just loved it. It was a, a release. It was a getaway. It was a fantasy world I cr- could create. You know, and uh, it's what I've always done, and uh, either on paper or sometimes on walls. Sorry, mom. And uh, <laughs> just I had to draw. I had to do art. It was just a part of me. And if people would ask me why, I didn't have an answer. It was almost like asking me, "Why are you breathing oxygen?" You know. Mm-hmm. So asking me why I do art is like asking me that. It's like it's what I do. Was there someone um, back then that was instrumental that influenced you in your in your art direction? Most definitely, my uh, um, teachers. I have always I have a real soft spot in my heart for teachers. I remember when I was in oh maybe first or second grade, um, and the teacher had a book on her desk that I was fascinated with. It was the complete works of Michelangelo. And of course, at that age, I didn't really understand the complexities of Renaissance art or art in general, but she would always let me peruse this book and she would just get a kick out of how fascinated I was with it. And she nurtured me and told my parents, you know what, I think you have an artist. Look at the drawings he's done in class and, and so on and so forth. So she was very instrumental. And teachers throughout, you know, all the way up to a collegiate level have always been a really amazing influence on me. Basically, when you're a kid, it's an adult who believes in you, which is sure. huge. Right. Well, I think even as we get older, I, I, a good friend of mine said, if, if someone believes in you, they're going to take you along with you. You know, yes. like they're going to they're going to put you under the wing and they're going to go. You're going to go with them. Um, that kind of mentorship is really, really nice. You, yes. get to, you, get, you get to cut a little a few corners instead of having to yeah. learn the hard way. Right. They're like, no, 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 we're not going to go this way. This is what we're going to do here, which is <laughs> awesome that you found so many people. What was your family supportive of it the whole time as well? My they didn't know exactly what to do with it. But they were as most supportive. Don't. Most don't, right? No, yeah. You tell your mom you want to be a doctor. She's like, yeah. You tell your mom you want to be a, you know, a musician or an artist. They're like, oh, you're going to starve to death. 
Right. But, but yet everybody yeah. loves it, though. That's the thing. Everyone loves music. Everyone loves art. But exactly. Yet they don't want anyone to do it. It's crazy that, to me. Isn't that strange? Everybody yes. loves music. They love to go out and see a play, an opera, listen to it, but don't. But kids, no, get a real job. It's like, yeah. Well, it's a pretty real yeah. job. <laughs> yeah. As real as it gets. Yes. You got to put in more time than nine to fivers. So it is a very real job. Right. And that's where the entrepreneurship comes into and into play. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll mom, a bit. my mom really knew early on I was an artist when I was a very, very small boy. She'd buy me coloring books all the time. One day she went to clean up my room after like a year of buying me coloring books. I don't remember this, but she told me this. And she looked in the closet and every coloring book she ever bought me was in there and there was nothing colored. And she came to me and she was like, I thought you liked drawing. You're always scribbling and stuff. So I got you those. What's the deal? And she said, I told her, those already have somebody's drawings in them. So from then on, she would just buy me plain paper, just copy paper and go, here you go. And then I was happy. That's awesome. Yeah. And then she realized, wow, he... He wants to create his own thing. He doesn't. He doesn't even like coloring books. He thinks they're somebody else's drawing, which they are. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It's funny. I just. I. I our, our kids. Our family is a really artistic group. Surprise. Surprise. And yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, right. um, Max loves to color. Right. We'll sit down and we'll color with him. We've got this mural that's like. I don't know how long it is. It's huge. We bought it for Christmas one year. We'll tape it on the floor and we'll all take a section and just go to town. And it's That's really so cool. cool. Uh, it's fascinating. Next time we get it out, I'll take a picture and send it to you. But it's yeah. really neat. And the other day I bought Max another coloring book because he's got a bunch, right? Um, and I bought myself a mandala book. And man, I'm just Ooh. sitting there coloring stuff. And I'm like, oh man, this is so much fun. It gets so neat. And he's like, can I color with you? And I'm like, yeah, dude. <laughs> like get get in here like we'll sneak in and, and we'll get it all together it's so neat and it's such a release and we were saying a little bit ago about having it be your your release and the way that you get things out um yeah. which is fascinating i can totally see it so when you get to florida you're going to college for for art as well yes i uh was fortunate enough to win a scholarship to the ringling school of art and design and my major was graphic design, commercial illustration. And um, after completing art school, that's the job I got as a you know graphic designer, illustrator. Did it for a while, but I wasn't very happy with it mm. because, um, you know, it was more of a nine to five job. You went into the art firm, you sat down, they're like, there's a new peanut butter bar came out. We need you to draw an elephant wearing tennis shoes and looking happy, you know? And I'm like, so they wanted very Disney looking kind of, which is fine. But I remember the day I quit that job because they actually did bring me a, that's why I mentioned this. They brought me a product. They're like, this is a new peanut butter bar. We need you to draw an elephant wearing tennis shoes juggling peanuts and I thought to myself I was like okay no one here really cares about anything that I've learned in art school about composition about theory about art history and the renaissance no they want to sell this peanut butter bar which is fine and then I decided I can't do this anymore so that's when I you know gave notice and I started pursuing some of my other art and luckily it coincided because at the time, um, a lot of my friends, duh, were musicians and <laughs> which we know a lot of musicians have tattoos. They would always come to me and ask me to draw something for them to take to the tattoo guy. Cause back then, as you know, there's only flash. And for people who don't know what flash is, it's when you walk into a tattoo shop and they just have generic stuff on the wall and you go, I, I want that one. But these artists wanted me, uh, these musicians wanted an artist to design something. So I would do that. And eventually it got to the point when I was getting sick of my commercial art job, they influenced me. They were like, 
why don't you tattoo us instead of just giving us the drawings and then we have to take it to a tattoo artist? And I was like, oh, 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 oh no, that's scary. No, uh, that's permanent. I, I get to use an eraser right now. That I don't. So I was intimidated. But like anything, you learn the trade properly. And it started off as me just tattooing friends. You know, I wasn't even, you know, doing it uh, as a vocation to earn any kind of wage. But all of a sudden, my house was so full of people getting tattooed. My wife was like, you need to rent a commercial space and get these people out of here. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, okay, I guess. So she we're was a huge this. influence, massive influence. She was. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, I guess I have a job. So it's weird. It kind of chose me. I didn't choose it. I was just, it, I was just, it was a hobby. I'm like, right. oh, I tattoo people, and then it got to a point where, oh, I guess I'm a tattoo artist now. So it happened very organically, not forced at all. Right. Before, so before you quit the job and before the, the tattooing took over, where were you going to go? Where did you think that you were going to go with it, you with your art? That I wasn't even sure. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure where I was going artistically at all, be it painting, tattooing, uh, my music. I was just kind of just enjoying being an artist. Mm -hmm. And young enough to where I had time to get serious later, but I was just enjoying being an artist and that's all kind of seeing where the day would take me. There's a lot of freedom in that. A lot. And I'm, I'm glad I got to experience that freedom, uh, which allowed my art to be pure instead of influenced by, Oh my God, I got to make money to pay this bill, which I did, but it, it didn't rule what I was doing. Right. What do they say? You do what you love and the money will follow? I believe it. Well, yeah. it worked for me. Right. There so. you go. It's that leap of faith. I think it's the hard part. That's the tough one because yeah. the leap of faith usually involves a uh, trial by fire somewhere in there. And uh, you get through that, then you're in. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, right. everything did work out. So you, you're in it. You're finally have a shop. Was that the first one in, in Florida or was this when you guys had picked up and you've made it to LA before? This was LA. This was LA. So you're out there yeah. already. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I got out of art school in Florida, got a couple of, you know, art jobs, few art jobs in LA. And then shortly after being in LA, I was like, no, no, I'm going to try something else. And that's when the tattoo thing hit. Got it. And you were very, very successful in that area, obviously. When we met, you were very uh, sought after. And I'm pretty sure you still have a very long waiting list to get in to see you. <laughs> it takes a while, but <laughs> I, I definitely make it worth the wait for you. <laughs> How long? For, yeah, yeah, no question. Uh, exactly. How long is the wait? If you came to me and wanted to get tattooed today, I could get to you... Oh, maybe by the end of the year, beginning of next year. <laughs> this is a bad, this is a, such a good problem to have. I love that. Yeah, it's a really good problem to have. <laughs> so were you, you were still that busy in Los Angeles. When you got to Austin, was it very similar? Did you have to, did people already have a, an idea of who you were and what you were able to do? And how long did it take to build that client base back up? Uh, it was instant. Yeah, yeah. I was, I'm fortunate enough um, that uh, I ran the business to the point where people knew who I was. Um, th it's weird to talk about yourself like this, but it's, it's easier for somebody else to say he's famous. <laughs> we'll just say I, I've, I've done enough work and been in the public eye enough to where I could go anywhere and tattoo and people would be, oh, that's Zulu. Yeah, go get tattooed by him. Right. Do you have, are you still traveling at all, going to any of the conventions? Um, or are um, you just sticking and staying? No, no more conventions. It's maybe once in a while, I'll do something in Tahiti or Samoa, but running all over this, the U.S. doing conventions, nah, it's just too much, too much work. <laughs> right. 
it's, it, that, that's for sure it is. So when you- Too much work outside of artwork, so. Right, right, so, which kind of takes the love out of it, right? Yes. Yes. Um, when you, what, what do you have, what have you noticed is the biggest difference between being in LA and being in Texas? Art-wise or just in general? Yeah, just or, in general, maybe, maybe a little bit of both. Well, uh, it's slower pace, which um, probably people can imagine. Uh, a lot of people say people are nicer here. I wouldn't say they're nicer. It's just, it's a slower pace. So people are talking to each other oh, more readily right. and at more lengthy extended periods of time upon meeting. So it seems friendlier, but it's just people are, are contacting more. And uh, it's not biz driven as LA is, which right. is fine, but you know, everybody is an actor in LA or you're trying to be one. Mm -hmm. And here it's not so much. People are just living their daily lives. Yeah, there's musicians and such, but they're not as, I don't want to use the word caught up, but they're, they don't, the majority of the population doesn't have to be so focused on trying to be an actor or get in the biz. So they're a little more relaxed. Right. So there's that. The art scene is completely different here. Oh, okay. Um, well, sorry, Austin's very Texas. Art artsy town. Austin's a very artsy town, right? Austin is a very crafty town. Mm. LA is a very art town. Ah, okay. There's not... Uh, sorry, Austin. The art scene here is not there yet. It's mm. not sophisticated at all. Not that art has to be highbrow. I'm just... It's it's just not there, you know. It, it's starting to happen. It's being influenced by other uh, cities, and um, I think some of the local artists are starting to realize, hey, I don't have to paint a longhorn cow to to make money. I can actually do some other stuff, and it might take longer. But yeah, because Texas is very. I have never been in a place that's so proud of itself, as you probably know. Texas yes. loves being Texas and they love everything to be Texas like. So the art scene is full of, you know, cows, cowboys, you know, crafty. Yeah. All of that, which is fine. Horns. Right. So it's a totally different uh, art scene here and it's more craft fair than fine art, Got which it. is fine. That's not a good yeah. or a bad thing. It's just what it happens to be. So and my it? art tends to fall into more of a fine art scene. Right. Mm -hmm. So I tend to sell paintings far more outside of Texas than here in Texas. Got it. So has your, your, your paintings, has that taken over more so of your time than, than the tattoo side? Oh, Have you... very much so. Oh, really? Very much so, which is why also it contributes to why it takes so long to get in to get a tattoo because mm -hmm. my career has shifted primarily towards painting and writing and illustrating children's books. So Amazing. I only tattoo now, um, you know, I, you know, when you met me, I was tattooing five, six, seven days a week sometimes. Right. Now I tattoo maybe once every weekend, maybe if that much, because wow. I'm spending all my time painting and writing children's books and illustrating. So tattooing, I'm semi-retired. Really? I will probably, I'm 58. By the time I'm 60, I will not be tattooing. Anymore. I need to make an appointment to come and see you before you shut it down then. <laughs> I, I, it's been a long time since I got any work done, but man, I, I, I should probably come see. <laughs> oh, so that, that's where we that. are in the division of art right now. Painting and the children's books. Is so you, I, I feel like you've come full circle. From where you started to where you went to now you're back to back to drawing crayon little characters and yeah <laughs> yeah and so tell me about the book i saw it on facebook that it, it was just released i believe yeah talk to it's, me about it, that how did that come about i um i met this well it goes back to a tattoo artist i used to work with uh and his name is lance houston and he still has a shop in um, LA. I believe it's called Shoebox Tattoo. 
back when he worked at, with me, he had, uh, had a daughter named Bailey, just the cutest, brightest little girl. And we threw a Halloween party one time and I was a pirate and she was a pirate. We were sword fighting, all this kind of stuff. And I always wanted to do a children's book. So I was like, I'm going to do one and use her as the main character and her cat and uh, her family. And so I just came up with a story. It wasn't actually lived, but I used them as the characters. Because I've always wanted to do a children's book. Uh, every, I was heavily influenced by all the Dr. Seuss stuff, the well, where, where the Wild Things Are, you know, all the books, all of those. Yes. And even as an adult, you know, I'll go into the dentist's office and on the table is Reader's Digest, Golf Magazine, and then there's a kid's book. I'm reading the kid's book <laughs> while I'm waiting for the dentist. So I've always wanted to contribute to that world. So is it going to be a series of books or is this one story and then you're going to make a different one with a different family? Or how do you how do you see that playing out? This right now is just uh, just each individual books. I haven't done a series or thought about a series yet but um yeah that book is already out it's on amazon and i'm working on my second one now that's what i was going to say what's going to be the second one because you can't do just one I mean, yeah you know, it's like pringles right Keep eating them. exactly so the first one is bailey's halloween tea party it's about a little girl she's trying to figure out what to be for halloween but the overall uh story is the girl learns that she can be whatever she wants to be for halloween but the lesson is you can be whatever you want to be, period. Ah, love it, yes. So it's based in her trying to figure out her costume and everything, but it's, that is a metaphor for of fig, trying on different costumes of the world to see which one fits. And you need to know, just pick one that you like and do that. And she runs into some people, uh, adults, who've forgotten how to do that and they learn how to do that again from her. So th the great thing about the book, it isn't just, oh, a kid needs to learn something. It's adults learn something too, but none of it is hit you in the face. It's all a very happy story. It's none of it is like, you shouldn't be mean because it's terrible and you know, you'll go to hell. You know, the, you know, it's all just a fun little story that happens to have a little moral code running through it, but not blatant because that's not fun. Kids don't want to read something that's like, be good. They're like, oh, no, I want something that's, let's have fun. So that's right. what the story is. Yeah, see, that's my son all the time is let's have fun. Sometimes he's too much fun. But How old is he? He's six. He'll tell awesome. you he's six and a half, but I'm like, you're six, dude. I'm not giving you any extra. <laughs> you're six and you're going to be seven when you're seven. That's it. I'm not having it. It's already going too fast as it is. But what you said about the parents learning through them as well. I do it every day. It's crazy. Like I he bet. does something. I'm like, Oh yeah, I remember that. Or, Oh, that was fascinating. So that's really, really nice to hear that you've got both of those angles coming both in. Of those. From both and sides people have found life. it strange. They're like, Zulu, you don't have children. What, what's up with children's books? And some people kind of look at me like I not necessarily don't have a place to come from, but you know, they're looking like, how can you write right. children's books? You don't even have kids. How can you know what to do, basically? Right. They don't say that, but you get that funny look. J.K. Rowling was a wizard. Yeah, right. And my answer is always, I'm not a parent, but I was a kid. Yeah, I love it. There you go. And that's where I'm writing from. I don't care what your parents think about the book. I really don't. I care what the kid thinks about the book. Mm -hmm. So nice. that's... I'm writing from the little kid in me who has never grown up and I don't plan on it. Maturing is cool. I'm doing my best to mature. I am doing my best to never grow up. <laughs> Man, look at all this crap in here, all the toys. and Oh, my gosh. I probably got more kids' toys than your kid. <laughs> oh, I don't know, dude. You should see our bedroom. It's called the Lego room. Because oh, there's oh. bins and bins and bins of Legos. And he's like, I'm going to the Lego room, which is our bedroom. I'm like, all right, go get it, dude. Build it. Like, you walk in there, you get Lego feet all the time. You're just oh. walking on them. <laughs> but it's, it's worth feet. it because, the, I mean, it's it's so good. That creative energy gets to get out and he gets to design and build them. We'll buy him a kit and he builds the kit and then he adds his own stuff to it. That's 
cool. Mike, dude, that looks really good. I love that. That's awesome. Like it's it's such a a wonderful release. And we said earlier about how everybody loves art, but they don't want anyone to be an artist. Mm. Um, it's, it's mind boggling. Um, I love the fact that you made it through and you had people that supported you um, to get there, which is wonderful. Yeah, I'm very fortunate. Yes. So what's next? So, well, let's go back. Where, if someone wants to make a, a, an appointment to come see you in 2022, how do they get a hold of you to get a tattoo on a Saturday? It's just go to my website and you can contact me through there. It's just my name, www.ronizulu.com. Perfect. And you can contact me through there. And, and there's, what about the book? How do we get a hold of the book? The book... Uh, yes. shameless shameless plug <laughs> so shameless <laughs> you gotta do it though this is, this is the beauty of this this is why i love this because this is just real uh, man you can get bailey's halloween tea party on amazon all you have to do is type in bailey's halloween tea party comes up you can get a ebook or you can get the hardcover look man you hold the book back up again <laughs> bailey looks so awesome this should be like this needs to get on, I don't know, some cartoon network or something. She looks incredible. <laughs> this would be great. And that cat can talk. Does the cat talk? The cat doesn't talk, but you think he does. He's actually my favorite character because in every uh, scene, he's looking at the viewer kind of like. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> like, are you getting this? Or See? Yeah, you saw See? that. I tried to you? tell you, right? Right. Yeah. He, he's so that, that cat is the voice inside of everybody's head going, oh, snap. <laughs> uh-huh. Yes, that cat uh, is I like the, that the cat. camera. The cat's the camera that we all think we're on in everyday life. Like someone saw that. There's nobody in the house, but someone saw it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So so I have fun with the book, with myself. You yeah. know? And that's the thing. When I'm drawing, I am drawing like I'm a kid. I'm like, oh, man, this cat is so cool looking. Oh, man. You know, if you saw me, you'd be like, Dude, you you're kind of a mess. <laughs> I'm like, no, not this this is fun. Go away. Are you gonna? They would lock me up if they saw how I acted while I was drawing these books. <laughs> so when you were designing all of your tattoos, was it the same feel as well? No, much more serious. Oh, really? The, the designing the uh, uh, children's books, very lighthearted. Um, very, you can imagine, just colors and big pictures and woo as opposed to uh designing tattoos usually people came to me for very serious reasons most of the time mm -hmm. and just the act of you know tattooing you can't mess up there's no eraser it's permanent things get a little bit more well a lot more serious mm -hmm. and more focused than they have to be with my children's book my children's books, I can just kind of throw stuff up in the air and see what sticks. Uh, the tattooing, there's no throwing stuff up in the air. You need to be very precise about this is what this person needs. It's what they want. And it's different in that a tattoo, I'm being hired to do a work. My okay. children's book, no, I do what I want. There's no one else influencing saying, well, I want a rose and it has to look like this. No, my it's so it's two totally different uh, approaches. Well, someone's going to want to come in and get Bailey tattooed on you. How ironic and awesome would that be? I would go bananas. That and I so might good. get this cat tattooed on me, actually. <laughs> that would be so good. So good. Um, man, listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you're a busy guy. Um, I am so appreciative of you taking the time to chat with me today to give me that backstory. Um, my dad told me a hundred times, hey man, you need to get Zulu on. You you you, you gotta give him a call. He, his story's gonna be great. I'm like, you know, he's busy. I'll, I'll I'll try. And dude, I'm so, so grateful for you doing this. This is awesome. And likewise, I'm glad you're doing this, connecting people with art, connecting people with people could that can influence them in a positive way to where right. we can all be connected. Because just by talking to you, you've influenced me. I'm like, yeah. That Craig, he's out there being positive. There's still good people in the world. I'm, I'm with him. On, I'm on his team. So thank you for doing this. Oh, I love this, and I've always said this is such a wonderful avenue for me to give people to to be 
grateful for the people that got them to where they are today. You know, the, know. whatever, whoever helped them, whoever helped shape them to me, I'm like, man, someone's got to, there's got to be a space for someone to thank people or to give their story because there's always is a story behind the backstory or behind their story. And I love yeah. that part of it because who knew? I didn't know you grew up in Terre Haute, man. I had no idea. I grew up in Chicago. Like we are already close. Right. right. It's like, what? <laughs> What get out of out of Indiana, really? So that's awesome, and, I, and I'm so glad that you shared that. And this has been a, an absolute pleasure. And likewise, man, I wish you well, and all the viewers all the best. Well, thank you, and I appreciate that, and uh, you as well. And we'll definitely stay in touch um, even after you've retired from tattooing. Right on. Excellent. Well, if you guys like what you're seeing, please make sure that you subscribe right here on YouTube. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please subscribe there as well. Zulu, you have a fantastic day, and I look forward to chatting with you soon. Thank you very much, my brother. You be well. All right. You as well. Take care. Bye-bye.